You're listening to the Water Cooler Edit with Chris and Rich. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Water Cooler Edit with My Beaut. On this episode, we'll be discussing new tips for newcomers. If you're new to the United Arab Emirates, welcome to the United Arab Emirates. <laughs> Rich and myself here will give you five tips each on things that you should take note of while you're here. So with the introduction out of the way, Rich, and yeah. of course your wise words that we're going to quote for the rest of the year now. I don't know where that came from, actually, where I pulled that one from. The hat, obviously. Pull it, pluck it from the sky. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or the tree behind you. You could pluck it from there next yeah, time. Yeah, the, the It's the, the tree, wisdom tree. Yeah, the wisdom tree. The tree of the, wisdom. The that's wisdom tree. That's why it's there now, isn't it? Yeah. Rich and myself have been here for quite some time. I myself have been here for almost 30 years. And Rich, I think you're, you've been here for over a decade. Yeah, I have, yeah. So it was uh, December 2012. So coming up on um, 11 years. Wow. Yeah. I've been here since 1995. Maybe Yikes. even possibly 94. Oh, Oasis came, were at number one. When I, you think I, came, <laughs> I think I came here in December 1994, if I remember correctly. Really? Yeah, that's Yikes. kind of way back. And amazing enough, I, went, I lived in Fujairah of all places. Mm -hmm. uh, what an incredible city that is. So, of course, we have five tips that we will give you. And, of course, we, we're not going to give them all out in one go. Let's go one, one like that. Yeah, we'll go I one, one each. Yeah. And uh, I'll let Rich start. Okay, let's go. First one. Well, look, there's all the stuff, the obvious stuff, like, you know, look on Bayou for, your, for, for the kind of property that you want, have an idea of do you research on areas, all the rest of it, all that sensible stuff. But I have one that might not sound so sensible, but I think it's important, right? Find a mall that you don't hate. There is, you know, inevitably, whether you like shopping or not, and some people love shopping and will love the fact that it's numerous malls here and you can shop until your heart's content, right? That's cool, no worries. Other people, not so much, right? But you are inevitably going to have to go to malls. It's part of the lifestyle here, right? And there's certain things you're going to have to go there for. It just happens. It's also Therefore, a great way to beat, beat the heat, by the way, when it gets too hot. Yes, it's true, right? So you have to find... I've it spent me a long time because I don't really like malls. And finding one that I don't absolutely detest has been important for me. So I have like a mall of choice. What is your mall of choice then? Nikhil Mall, isn't it? It is actually, oh. yeah. Nailed it. And I know why, yes. because it's not very full. It doesn't get packed quite often, does right, it? Right, this is, this is, yes. So for me, that's kind of perfect. All right, some people would say the shop selection is not fantastic. If, it, that would, is my mall of choice. If the, it, the shop that I want or whatever isn't available at Nikhil Mall, because it isn't one of the bigger malls, Dubai Hills Mall. Yeah, I was going to agree there. I would say Dubai Hills Mall as well. I love the aesthetics of it, especially inside. It mm. looks more like a, a street, like especially on the top floor, right? With the yeah. awnings and everything like that. It gives you that kind of street vibe. It's very European-esque and, and it's it, massive, isn't it? Yeah, so it's the walkways humongous. are big. So even if it's like quite busy, it, the perception when you're in there, it doesn't feel as busy yeah. because of how... You're not so condensed. crushed together, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So... Mall, that's number one. Mall you don't hate. Yes. So let's say your, that's your tip number one. My, yeah, my first tip, obviously, is to use a platform such as Dubizzle if you're looking for furniture, if you're looking for a car, anything like that is Dubizzle because you can hunt for basically everything in one convenient location. Mm -hmm. You can pick up some great deals um, and you can, and it's very easy to use. It's available, of course, on uh, mobile and, of course, desktop. Yeah. Um, and of course, well, Beirut and Dubizzle, well, we're stronger together, aren't we? Mm, this is absolutely true. And you can save yourself cash on there, right? You can. Uh, you know. I've been on a binge recently of uh, using I, Dubizzle. Yes, I've had an account on there for, since 2008. Yikes. Uh, were you the first customer? I mean, were you the first person to no, have an account? No, <laughs> the platform started in 2005. Really? Right. Yeah, so I was three years too late. 18 years. Well, yeah, I know. I can't believe I've been, yeah, I can't believe I've been on the platform for 15 years. That is quite impressive, um, actually. And I still have no profile picture, and then my profile is still empty. <laughs> uh, but I've been, I've been on a, a binge of Dubizzle. I've been Dubizzling quite a fair bit, actually, and I found some, like you said, some great deals. Yeah, but this is the thing, right? Especially if you're new to the UAE. I mean, it's, it's the same whether you're new or wherever you exist in might, but at the end of the day, um, the cost of living you know, can be quite pricey, especially if you just move somewhere, all that added expense of getting yourself settled down, furniture, blah, 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 and all the rest of it. There's stuff on there on Dubizzle across numerous categories 
that you can uh, you can save yourself cash, right? Yep. There's uh, there's bargains to be had, Chris. There are, and there's even a community section as well. You can adopt a pet. Uh, you can get a tutor. There's everything there that you can get. Excellent, perfect. It's good stuff. What's right. your next pro tip? Right, I'm trying to think. Um, this one's more of a recommendation. Okay. Right. So if you're new to Dubai, okay. Um, one thing I would say is that check out the other Emirates, right? Because um, it will give you a feel for the country as a whole, right? And I think sometimes people just come and just spend pretty much their entire existence in Dubai and miss out on, like, because I, f- I feel sometimes like each Emirate has a kind of unique feel to it. Do you know yep. what I mean? Yep, I agree 100%. Yeah, so like you go down to Rack and it's got more of a, a, a slightly more relaxed feel. It's got the whole adventure thing going on as well with um, Jebel Jace, right? And all the rest of it. But um, and there's a lot of things going on down in Rack, exciting stuff now as well. Uh, Abu Dhabi has a different feel to Dubai and it's really cool stuff down there. I mean, it's just nice to experience Abu Dhabi, but stuff like the Louvre and all that is stunning, right? Yeah. Um, Ajman, Sharjah, Fujairah. They, I mean, uh, uh, Sharjah is the, the culture capital of yep. the UAE, right? So it's got loads of museums, all these things. I think sometimes people miss out on that stuff, understandably, right? Because you just kind of get focused on where you are. So that would be a suggestion for me is to check out some other Emirates. You, you know? forgot the seventh Emirate, though. Fujairah, Ajman, Sharjah... Amal Kuwait. There you go. Yeah. That's the one that you missed. It's like a sleepy little desert town. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful area. And mm. it's, it's kind of like you're going back in time. Everything's a little different there. Yeah, a bit more traditional. In, I exactly. Yeah. And it's, honestly, it's a, it's a very beautiful place when you go there. And when you do go there, go to Dreamland. It's the, one of the oldest water parks in the country. I've been to Dreamland. I've been there many times when growing up. <laughs> but no, I 100% agree with you there. The, uh, the fact that every emirate is different in its own right. You know, mm. like you said, Dubai is sort of the glitzy, the, the glamoury one with all the tall buildings and everything like that. Yes, there are sky rises in places like Abu Dhabi and Sharjah, mm-hmm. but obviously not as uh, they are here in Dubai. Not as prolific. Uh, Exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. So do experience all seven Emirates. Um, nice. On that note, uh, Back to you. experience countries that are around the United Arab Emirates, especially Oman. Now, Oman is very close. Saudi is also very close as well. It's a, if I'm not mistaken, it's a one and a half or two hour drive to the border and then another two hours to get to the uh, capital of Mus- Oman, which is Muscat. Yep. Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia is um, a couple of hours drive as well. I think it's about a four hour drive. Uh, from Dubai itself. And if you're in Abu Dhabi, it's a, it's a bit closer because you just go straight down mm. through Dhafala. And also, Bahrain is drivable. Qatar is also drivable as well. Yeah, you can actually have a really nice road trip. Uh, but what I advise here you to do is that when it gets to the point where you need to get car insurance, make sure you have car insurance that covers these countries, specifically Oman, because it is a it's a very touristy destination. A lot of people like mm. to drive down there here from the United Arab Emirates, especially to Salalah and these places. Yeah, and the absolutely. last thing you wanted, the last thing you want to do is get stuck there. So make sure you get insurance when you go. Yeah, we've got we've actually got a, um, a, an article on the blog about uh, planning a road trip to Salalah. So the insurance obviously being a, a part of that. You know, I haven't been to Salalah. I've been to Muscat. I have too, and I've spent some time in Oman as well. And it's always that one thing I always forget, and I always take off because I'm like, you know what? No, I don't want to pay for it because I'm not going to go to Oman. And then a week later, someone's like, hey, we should go to Oman. We should probably go to Salalah. I'm thinking, <laughs> you could have told me this like a week ago, so I could have actually bought the insurance. Now I have to. Pay for an extra. No, you know, I'd yeah. rather do it in one long, uh, one full swoop. To- totally know what you mean. Um, I've, got, I've got a recommendation for in Oman as well, actually. I went to what, the world's largest sinkhole in Oman. And uh, I can't remember what it's called, actually. But you go and you can actually swim in it because it's got water at the bottom. How deep is it, though, if, you, if it's a sinkhole? Well, it's, it's really quite deep, but there's no, like... I mean, you're not going to get sucked down into the middle of the earth if, I, if that's what you're worried about. If, you're I not gonna in, blow. <laughs> if I go into the sinkhole and I sink, am I sinking in the sinkhole? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then you get... To, like I say, you, then you get sucked down into the middle of the earth. Nice. And so the I'll, last, I'll it, last thing you see is the earth's core, and then you, you spontaneously combust. So I'll go through it, and then I'll pop out on the other side. So I'll probably pop out in some ocean somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So that's yeah. obviously where the water's coming yeah, from. This, yeah, this is how it works. Exactly, yeah. So uh, check out that sinkhole. Okay. Yeah. But we're not going to count that as one of our tips for no, newcomers no, to no, you. No, that so a, that's a bonus. Now, tip number three. Tip number three. Okay, so we're going to go with... 
find a cinema that you like, right? I mean, look, not everyone's going to go to the movies, but yeah, as a population, I think uh, it's, it's a fair percentage do. There is, if there's one thing there's a lot of here, it's cinemas, yep. right? Now, me be, some people like a packed cinema, buzzy, vibey, they want it to be, you know, like a, you know, a little thriving hub of activity, right? I'm not that person, <laughs> so I like cinemas <laughs> where there's the, as, as fewer people as possible, so there's less chance of uh, uh, breaking your immersion into the movie. I, right? I agree with you 100% there. So yeah. what's, what's your cinema of choice? And you can't say Nikhil Mall. Right, okay, that's a problem because I was going to say Nikhil Mall because I knew it. I knew for it. the same so reason that I like that mall. That <laughs> it's, a, it's a Vox cinema, it's a really nice cinema, different options available, and it, um, it's never that, bit. for me, it's never that busy. Um, if I used to always go to um, IMAX, uh, Mall of the Emirates, Vox, but Recently, I have checked out, um, so my cinema choice is Nikhil Mall, but um, also Roxy at uh, Dubai Hills. That, that massive screen, the biggest one in the Middle East, is quite impressive. But if you want a quiet, for a quiet one, it's uh, Nikhil for me. So my choice is Arabian Centre. I think the cinema's yeah. called Cinema City. Uh, on multiple occasions, I've, been, I've watched uh, the Super Mario movie when it came out. I yeah. watched Detective Pikachu, um, and I can't remember. I watched another film, a Barbie as well. I watched in there too. Uh, every time we've been, there's been about 10 people maximum. And I'm talking Perfect. like, we've gone around, we've gone in public holidays, we've gone during um, opening nights, or even a couple of days after, like maybe one or two days afterwards. I realise now that we're talking about this, you know our cinemas are getting packed now. We're going to have to find new ones that we can't tell people yeah. about. <laughs> so my additional tip, I, I think this is my third tip as well, mm. is to shop around. Don't go to one specific mall or one specific place to buy something. If you're looking for like things like electronics, gadgets, stuff like this, you'll actually find in old Dubai, which is, say, Bur Dubai, Dira, uh, Al Nada, even the places closer to Sharjah as well, you'll find some really good deals. Sharjah, in, in particular, has some incredible deals on uh, electronics. And, of course, they are legit, and you can get some stuff that you won't be able to find here. I'm talking about devices, obviously, like certain phones. Uh, I know when I first, when Windows Phone first came out, they didn't sell yeah. them here officially. I bought all of them from Dira at the time. Really? Um, cool. Uh, same with games, things like this. If you're a gamer, you can find some really great deals in old Dubai. Yeah, yeah. So the, I think that's a really, really good point. Shop around. Don't forget old Dubai um, because there's some good stuff down there. And the shopping around thing is, is so relevant because the fluctuation in prices here can be quite staggering, right? And you can end up paying an absolute whack for something and then uh, you get that, that horrible feeling like a, you know three weeks down the line when you happen to be somewhere else and you see the same thing you bought for about half the price yep. that you bought it. This that happens far too often. disappointment, right? <laughs> it's, it's, you know, and there's some sort of thrill to this as well. Like you kind of get a, a kick when, if, you, if you're really into something and you really do like looking for certain things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You but can you shop around, you can spend a good, uh, day or two looking for this kind of stuff and why not create a vlog about it too something that I've been meaning to do for literally years now and yeah, I just haven't got around to with, doing yeah, it with your, with your epic video games collection and your hunting down of the games yeah. pretty much right yeah you know you should do this I should one day it's long overdue it is okay I'm going to go with um, this is a bit of an obvious one but it is part of the Dubai culture to an extent so I think it's worth doing a brunch quite early when okay. you move to Dubai, right? There's, there's the English coming out on you. Right, you know, only because, <laughs> like, just so, I mean, look, only if it's, the, if it's the only one you ever do when you're here, right? Um, but just because it has been part of Dubai's culture for such a long time. This is true. And, and, and I, there's different types of bunches, right? So it doesn't have to be, like, one where everyone's standing on the tables ridiculously um, inebriated with alcohol. There are like fine dining brunches. There's family friend. We discussed recently, right? Yeah, the, the one with the penguins. Yeah, the one with the with the the, with the waiters, penguins. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. So, <laughs> and uh, and the dancing monkeys as well. So no, look, there's family friendly brunches. There's brunches pretty much for everyone. So I think it's quite a nice thing to do uh, when you arrive in Dubai, just uh, just so you could just for the experience, huh? 
Life's yep. all about experiences. And if you hate it, don't do another one. That is true. Experience was <laughs> And from what I understand here, brunch is a little bit different compared to the rest of the world. Each. Oh, very much so. Uh, and we've also got them on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays. I'm pretty sure there's other ones. There's evening the week ones. As well. Yeah, there's e- yeah. evening bunches. And yeah. you can get a whole mix of things that you never thought would have existed either. Yeah. Uh, for my next tip is also about an experience, and that is to experience the Dubai Creek, specifically the Abras, the small boats that they have that ferry you from one side of the creek to the other. I haven't done this. You haven't done this. No, You're no, missing no, out. Just, no. Amazing enough, I still, I think they're still around two dirhams, if I'm not mistaken. I think they are. I think when I was obviously a child, I think it was about 50 fills or a dirham to go across. And it is the most, I've got to say, for me personally, it was the most interesting thing to do because... Mm. You don't need to walk across the bridge. You can get a boat, and you can you can you can ferry yourself across. And the, you can see the man. He's he's there navigating the boat and powering her up. The engine sits underneath you, and you all sit on the side of it. Mm-hmm. You get to see the creek. And now that it's being built up, uh, mm-hmm. there's a lot of heritage around uh, where these boats are as well, mm-hmm. especially like the Shindaga area. Um, you get to see a lot of Dubai that you don't really see. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people when they come to the United Arab Emirates or Dubai as a whole, they just see buildings everywhere. You know, they mm. see the skyscrapers and everything like this. There is such a rich heritage in this country, especially in old Dubai. It's Based incredible to see. around the creek, right? Yeah. That's a lot of where that heritage is and that tradition was. That's where obviously... Exactly, and that's where it's all started. So I can move on to my last one? Yep. Okay, last one. I'm going to credit my wife for this one because I was talking to her about this last night and I only had four and she came up with this one. I thought it was good. All right, so um, basically... Get the number of a local pharmacy to you that delivers and a local supermarket to you that delivers, right? So not your kind of major ones like Carrefour or Choichums, but like the little local uh, supermarkets you get within buildings and stuff like that. Because it can be like a, a life, lifesaver is a bit strong, but like, you know, that's not where you just need, you've run out of milk, you've run out of ice, you run out, of, you need some bottles of water, you need... You're not feeling very well, you need some meds from the pharmacy or whatever. We've got a pharmacy really close to us and a little supermarket really close to us. You just call them up and they get their delivery within like 20 minutes or whatever. And it's really, really handy to have that option, especially also as well if you're just feeling lazy and you can't be bothered to go out, Chris. And the best, <laughs> the best part, by the way, if you're new to United Arab Emirates and you don't know about this, by the way, what Rich is saying here is 100% true you can also order this stuff at any time, any time of the day. Yeah, yeah, you can call the shop up. You can call the pharmacy. Mm-hmm. You can even get food delivered 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> okay, in some parts, maybe not, but you can do it. Yeah, and yeah. It, is, it is possible. And this is something that obviously people won't be used to. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not used to it when I go back to where I'm from because I don't understand how that works at all. I'm used to 24-7 convenience. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of things here. If you want to go shopping at four in the morning, let's say you want to buy something, guarantee there'll be a shop somewhere open. Malls are open till 1 a.m. During E, they're open even uh, later. later. You can get pretty much anything and everything when you want it. Yeah, yeah. You, you absolutely can. This little um, uh, supermarket cut, and I think also it's quite nice to support the little smaller supermarkets sometimes as well, right? Because obviously Carrefour, Spinney's and all the rest of it, they're doing all right, you know what I mean? But sometimes the smaller supermarkets can struggle. So, but I've called them up at like, you know, they delivered like one in the morning and yep. stuff like that. We've had the pharmacy deliver at one in the morning. But we, uh, Jay hasn't been particularly well. We've needed some meds and stuff like that. So that convenience is there, which is very, especially, I'll be honest, if you're coming from the UK, that is very unusual. Yeah, we're stuff <laughs> closed at five. How do you get anything done there? Seriously, you can't do anything. Shops close at half past five. I mean, at least, at least supermarkets now stay open later, but like shops in high streets and stuff close at half past five you in the afternoon. Can you imagine doing that here? Like people would be like, what? I mean, <laughs> it, honestly, it did happen for some time. And this goes into my next tip. No. I have actually many more tips, but I realize... Oh, we need a drum roll because this we're, is the last we're, tip. We're going to run out of time. Um, so if you're, my final tip here, I guess, I guess it's our final tip here, isn't it? <laughs> on the water cooler edit. Uh, is Fridays. Now, if you're new to the United Arab Emirates and you're new to the culture, you're new to the religion of uh, Islam as well, be respectful between the hours of 1 and 3 p.m. here because it is prayer time. Friday prayer is very important. It is the most important prayer of the uh, the week. Um, And obviously, Muslims will go and pray. They will go out to their nearest mosque. Mm. Uh, They might go home to do prayers there as well. They go with their family. Everybody goes. Uh, And it can be uh, a little bit 
weird uh, for newcomers because they might not be used to it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you might see people uh, praying outside the mosque. They might be on the road or stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Please be respectful and please be mindful of this because, again, it is a very important time. Don't drive past mosques blaring music as loud as you want. Be respectful, uh, especially during the call to prayer. Just don't do that whatsoever. It's, you wouldn't like it if someone did that to you. Yeah, don't yeah. do it the other way around. Um, Completely agree. Also... Uh, just be aware that if you need to get anything done between those hours, if you want to go shopping, uh, especially in some older places in Dubai, mm. the, they're, not, they're not open. You will not get anything done between the hours of one and three. Yeah. Uh, there are still a lot of uh, companies that do uh, split shifts. There are a lot of shops that have split shifts. They will not be open during the hours of one and four. This is not just on Fridays. It's actually during the week as well. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to do anything then. You could be able to do stuff from nine to one and then from four to about nine o'clock in the evening. Yeah. So it might be a bit of a culture shock here, but obviously... Do keep that in mind. Yeah, it's changed quite a, a lot, really, hasn't it? Because now, obviously, Friday used to be part of the weekend, but we've we've transitioned um, at the start of last year to the Saturday, Sunday weekend. I mean, I've been here long enough. I've seen three weekend changes. Yeah, because you it was Thursday, Friday, originally. Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, th Friday, Saturday. Now it's Saturday, Sunday. Yikes! And possibly no wait. Yeah, Wednesdays were half days. Yes, I remember that. Really? Yeah. yeah. Especially for school, anyway. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, look, I completely back up what you say. It's just a case of being culturally aware and uh, respectful, right? Um, to treat others how you'd want to be treated yourself. I think that's pretty much what it's about. Exactly. Um, so uh, I think that's a, a fantastic one to end on. Wee. So thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the Water Cooler Edit with My Beard. Of course, you want to learn any more about the subject that we've discussed and you want any more pro tips, don't forget to leave us a comment down below, especially if you've been here a long time or you're a local. Let us know and let everyone else know a bit more about the country and what they should do and what they should be aware of and things like this. But thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. You're listening to the Water Cooler Edit with Chris and Rich.